Okay, good evening, uh, everybody. Uh, we uh, started our meeting this evening in closed session and apologize to the public for the uh, delay here. We've had quite a few technical problems. I think they're all ironed out now and uh, off we go to the, to the rest of the meeting. And so we'll do a rise and report and I'll ask the clerk to speak to that, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. The meeting was called to order at 6 p.m. in open session with a motion presented and passed to move into closed session to receive information regarding an administrative review matter. Council provided direction to staff respecting a potential disposition of land matter and a procedural vote was taken to ratify previous closed session minutes. Okay, thank you. And we move to the land acknowledgement statement. We'd like to begin this meeting by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples, acknowledging the One Bowl and Spoon Treaty. And now we'll move to the mayor's remarks. We'll keep that brief. Please note the meeting proceedings are being broadcast live, recorded, and made through available through the township website and youtube.com. Our township offices will be closed on Friday, April 2nd and Monday, April the 5th for the Easter weekend. Uh, the Wayne Volunteer Firefighters Association is holding their COVID safe fish fry Friday, April 2nd at the community hall starting at 4.30. And we'd like to have as much support there as we can. And we received receive correspondence today from the Office of the Fire Marshal and Emergency Management confirming that once again, the township is compliant with the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act. So kudos to our fire chief and community emergency management coordinator, uh, Morgan Alcock, and our leadership team for their hard work. I think this is the third year in a row that we have achieved this now. It's, uh, it's a good uh, milestone to reach. And our next regular meeting of council will be held Tuesday, April 20th at 7 p.m. And that's all I have for the mayor's remarks. Mr. Right. Mayor, th through you, just on the matter of the accreditation from the fire marshal, uh, I, I think it's also incumbent on us to uh, thank council for its, uh, its encouragement, its commitment, and its uh, uh, drive to making the fire department what it is. So thank you to council as well. Thank you very much. And uh, are there any comments by any of the councillors? Okay, seeing none, uh, we're going to move into the adoption of uh, previous council minutes. Are there any comments? Uh, minutes of the regular meeting held March 9th, 2021. Are there any comments, corrections for the regular meeting of that council? Uh, okay, the motion being that the minutes of the regular Meeting of Council held March 9th, 2021, be adopted as circulated. A mover and a seconder for that, please. Councillor McClellan and Councillor Gilmore. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none. And the vote, Councillor McClellan. Councillor uh, Van Vliet. In favor. Councillor Gilmore. In favor. Councillor Cridland. In favor. And those are carried. And then we'll now move to a public meeting. And we don't have any, so we'll skip right over that. And we'll go to our delegations, which uh, I believe we have this evening. Our first delegate is uh, William Miles, his Wayne Fleet resident, and, and uh, William is with us. He's seeking council's approval for the use of the arena parking lot for a series of drive-in concerts. And he has submitted a delegation to make the presentation requesting that. And I now call upon Mr. Miles to present to council. Uh, you have 10 minutes, Mr. Uh, Miles, and I'll stop at nine minutes. I'll let you know you have a minute left and you may begin. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as you know, uh, um, the entertainment industry has been really hit hard by this whole COVID-19 uh, thing. Um, I'm a local musician. Uh, I play in a band. Uh, we play in Chirks and Shores, Jordan House, uh, all around the region, uh, Grape and Wine Festival, stuff like that. And uh, the idea came to me uh, to have a series of drive-in concerts, uh, COVID-friendly, uh, because they will be in a vehicle. Um, also, it's uh, easily adaptable to whatever COVID uh, restrictions are in place at the time. Um, the the events will be charity-based events. So we're getting sponsored 
partnership from local businesses from the community. Um, I already have a huge outpouring from the community um, about doing this. And what I'm hoping to do is generate, I would, I would like to hope for about $4,000. Each concert would cost about $1,000 to run. Uh, first and foremost, I wanted to get musicians some, some money into their pocket who are struggling quite a, quite a bit right at the moment. Um, secondly, something for people to do and to look forward to as there's not a lot. And thirdly, to uh, help with mental health and stuff like that. As you all know, everybody's shut up in their houses and, and everything like that. Um, I've checked, I, I have gone and checked with Niagara Region Health and talked with them about being able to do this. And what I've been told is as long as we are following COVID protocols, which are in place at the moment, then there is no issue with it. Um, it being outdoors, uh, and if everybody stays in their cars, then we're fo following protocol. They've already had a series of driving com concerts uh, in Toronto, um, I believe, last summer. Also, there's several drive-in uh, movie places that have been ho hosting uh, concerts outdoors like this. So there's a bunch of different ways to go about it. And obviously it would be COVID friendly. Uh, if the, at the time we're in red zone or you're allowed to have X amount of people outside social distancing, what we would then do would be move it to the car parks. There's a box beside the car and they're allowed to sit in that box with lawn chairs or whatever. If, if we're in complete lockdown, then they would have to be stay in their car the entire time. So, like I said, it 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 can fluctuate with what's what's happening. Um, I've talked with the firefighters uh, and the firefighter association. Um, they've expressed to me that they think this is a great idea. Um, I'm hoping that we can work it so they could do their fish fry around it or something like that. Obviously, this would be early evening and wouldn't go late at night. Uh, but at the same time, you have to take into perspective that you can't have people in their cars at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm hoping to do it uh, between probably 5 to 8, uh, 5 to 8 p.m. at night. And like I said, the firefighters, uh, what I've been told by the association and the firefighters is they're waiting for council's decision. Um, so the charity that's being picked, I believe, is going to be local youth sports. Um, I'm hoping if we get enough sponsorship uh, that we won't have to charge an admission fee. I, I wouldn't want to charge an admission fee. I'm hoping that we could say that we want them to make a donation, uh, pay what you can, and then a non-perishable food item. So um, we are generating a lot of uh, revenue for local charities. Um, and I think the food donations could probably, probably go to the local food bank. I think it would be a good thing. And um, like I said, I, I have several volunteers already in place. Um, I haven't gone ahead with sponsorship, but I've been told that there shouldn't be an issue with it. Um, we're talking to Meridian, uh, obviously the, the regular people, Ben Berg, I'm hoping are gonna get on board. Uh, the one thing I was gonna ask council was, I'm pretty sure that there is a, a stage trailer that's been used at the fair that belongs to the region. And if we could possibly be able to use that that would be a great help. But if not, I'm thinking probably Ben Berg will provide some kind of flat platform or a hay wagon or something like that, that we can use. So that is essentially it. Like I said, all COVID voter protocols will be followed. Uh, there's no cost to the township and it's something to do to bring our community together in this tough time. Uh, I know everybody's struggling and I also have, a gentleman who is willing to come out 
and live stream obviously for a cost, but he could live stream up to four cam camera angles. So I'm hoping to maybe maybe think about that. I'm not sure if it's in the budget. I, I might do that so so that the people who aren't able to get in, if there's like say we only get I, I'm thinking probably it would be around 50 to 60 cars in that area. I don't know if you can get more than that. But if for the people that couldn't come or don't want to come out, uh, but would be interested in also seeing the performances, I'm thinking that we might be able to do a live stream also. So that's basically it in a nutshell. And uh, I'm looking forward to your feedback. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your presentation, Mr. Miles. And we'll go right to any questions by any councillors. Okay, I have a couple. Um, noise level, there's quite a few residences in the area. Uh, obviously, the timing is great, 5 to 8 p.m., uh, but still the noise level would have to be um, at a certain point and not above. How do we monitor that, Mr. Miles? What's the, how do you look after that? Well, it, it, is an, it's, it is an outdoor event, and they're, you know, um, as you well know, they, they have uh, several bands play at the Fall Fair. Uh, I, I don't believe that it's going to be uh, louder than that. Um, you know, uh, you can't, you can't, uh, I have, I'm going to be using my own PA, uh, which I use for bars. It, it's not going to be a huge, uh, huge PA. So, you know, like, I, I don't think the noise levels are going to be a factor. You know, I'm not pushing out like there's 600 Watts of side speakers. I'm not pushing out, you know, 30,000 Watts of power or anything like that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Councillor McClellan. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so Ms. It, this would be uh, family friendly, I take it. We're not going to be uh, getting complaints because it was um, too rowdy. Um, I could answer that. So I, I'm thinking of having several different types of musicians uh, and bands. So, uh, for instance, my band is called Back to the 80s. We basically play top 40 rock and new wave from the 80s. So it's very family friendly stuff. Uh, basically anything you would hear on Giant FM. And I forgot to mention, I did also have some support from Giant. Uh, told me that he would be on board with hosting. Uh, so I'm thinking, obvious. We lost you there. There's so sorry. I apologize. I said I'm going to get my band in there, and then I'm thinking country and western. Uh, there is talk with uh, Minor Brothers. Actually, Riley Michaels works for them, so I'm hoping to get them to to um, sponsor. And there's talk of him coming and playing. Uh, also, uh, I was hoping to get a bluegrass and uh, an oldies. Uh, 50s band so I'm gonna make it very diverse and family friendly so a little bit of something for every everybody for the different types of things and then of course I'm gonna look for up-and-coming musicians younger musicians that want a chance to have something too okay thank you any uh, questions councillor Cridlin uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you for the presentation tonight, uh, Mr. Miles. Uh, I noticed that you are you are anticipating wanting uh, to commit to four uh, um, events, uh, but uh, can these be done one at a time? So, can we see what kind of success we're going to have in the first one? Things like noise levels, or things like how that one went, and then consider perhaps uh, subsequent ones, or is it? Um, is it sort of an all or nothing type of uh, model that you're uh, considering uh, or having us consider tonight? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, I, I believe that uh, if you guys said, why don't we have one, see how that goes. And then, you know, like I would have a month to plan the other one. So it's, it's not like, it's not like it's something that it's like, okay, well, this didn't work. You know, there was, all these issues and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. Of course, it's 
it's all at your guys' discretion. I like, I, I want to work hand in hand with everybody. I want this to be something that we can be proud of as a community. And I believe that if it's done right, and if it's done within the protocols and within everything, then everybody should be happy, you know? Okay. Anything further, Councillor Cridlin? Um, no, uh, through you, Mayor. Thank you, um, Mr. Ma. Uh, I might have some questions of our operations manager, but I'll wait. I'll wait till we uh, receive the report or whatever the motion's going to be. Or maybe, m maybe Mr. Nan could speak to a, a few questions right now. Richard, are you there? Please go ahead, Donna. Councilor. Uh, thank you, uh, through you, Mayor. Um, uh, Richard, these we haven't had an event, uh, I don't think, like this or a request um, for using uh, the public space, particularly the, the parking lot. So it, I'm kind of excited about, uh, you know, the community looking for ways to um, think about how to use their community. So I, I'm really excited that COVID has actually kind of presented this opportunity for us tonight. However, um, considering we've not done it before and I know we we sometimes think there's no cost, but I wouldn't mind uh, maybe suggesting we have operations look at this, you know, kind of see what potential costs there are. There's setup, there's cleanup, there's things that we might not know about. Uh, there's been no mention of washrooms, um, garbage, things like that. So um, would there be a way that you could either talk to a little bit of that tonight or maybe review it and just bring back something that just outlines the kinds of costs we might be absorbing? Thank you. Yeah, through your worship to uh, to Councillor uh, Cridlin. Yeah, we can definitely uh, review uh, some of those questions with uh, with the gentleman once uh, once Council has their opinion put forward. Uh, we would definitely have to review things like the costing, etc. Uh, currently, the parking lot is usually thrown in with one with the rental costs of the existing facility. So, if we're renting the arena or the community hall, the parking lot's usually included. So we don't have a separate price for that now, uh, but we will have to consider uh, like, for instance, he's requesting hydro. Uh, but again, if council um, would like us to investigate more and come back, that's, that's definitely something we could do. Um, but we're just looking for council's direction at this time. And we will continue to work with uh, Mr. Miles if, uh, if council see, uh, sees fit. Okay, thank you. Anything further, Councillor Cridlin? Uh, no, uh, thank you. I, I wouldn't mind us going in the direction where we do get that all outlined. I, I do see the potential for more requests. So uh, understanding how that space is used and what it could be used for is going to be great. Maybe people will come to us and approach uh, us for soccer field use different than what it normally is. So, uh, you know, this probably opens up other, other opportunities that we could uh, have um, Mr. Nan, maybe look at different kinds of uh, fees or costs, costs and fees, something minimal, but something that gets us started so that we are moving forward. Um, I probably should make a motion that this uh, just be sent to staff then and, uh, and come back with just a, a high level outline of, uh, of the costs. Okay, so you're making that motion? Yes, please. And within that motion also to receive the report? Um, yes. Have a seconder for that, please. Councillor Van Vliet. Any further discussion on that? What, uh, just, uh, I have one point. Um, the first concert you have down for May something. How much time do you need to, May 22nd, how much time ahead of that would you need to have a, a completed answer? Well, I would, I would like to think, um, well, I I would like to get an answer as soon as possible because I have to find sponsorship. So once I, like I said, everything is waiting on councils, yes or no right now. Um, so so I can't move forward as far as finding with the firefighters. I can't move forward with Meridian. I can't move forward with anybody until I have a yes. You can do this or no. And then once I do, um, I would think I need at least a month. Now, like I said, these dates are not set in stone. They're just suggested. So okay. they could be, it could be moved. If it's going to take you a little while longer to make a decision, that's fine. And I would also like to put out there that I'm pretty sure that, um, 
if I needed to get a couple of porto potties, one female, one male, um, I'm pretty sure that the sponsorship could take up the cost for that also. Yeah, that, that's all the logistics that we'll, you'll have to go over with our operations manager. Mm -hmm. um, there is a motion on the floor, discussion of it. Councillor McClellan. My only question is, is there anything else scheduled for rentals that giving up the parking lot would be just... Yeah, that'll you know, all come soccer, out. all of that, right? Just so does nobody in the tennis or... Right, our operations manager will look at all that as yeah. we start to hammer out the details on this. So, okay, so there's a motion on the floor to refer this to staff, uh, particularly our operations manager, to work with uh, Mr. Miles to to uh, iron out the details and what's required. So the discussion's been had, and uh, look for the uh, a vote on it now. So uh, Councillor McClellan. In favour. Councillor Van Vliet. In favour. Councillor Cridland. In favour. Councillor Gilmore. In favour. And I'm in favour. Thank you, uh, Mr. Miles. We will get that. Uh, actually, we'll ask our operations manager to coordinate with you, and we'll as quickly as we can and move this forward for you as fast as we can. Uh, there just are a number of logistical details that we do have to iron out before we can just say yes to it, but uh, we'll work on it as quickly as we can for you. Hey, that's, that's amazing. I really appreciate uh, your guys' openness and willingness to do this, and I'm hoping that uh, what this will turn into is something uh, that we could do uh, regularly in the summers. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Have Bye a good now. night. Yep. Bye. Okay, moving on to staff reports and recommendations. And I'll ask Mr. Colossa to speak to our COVID-19 uh, impact report, please. Uh, Mr. Mayor, through you to Council. Uh, I will try to be brief. This is our next regular monthly update on the status of the COVID-19 pandemic. And the report focuses on three main, uh, three main areas. Uh, first, just reviewing our current COVID-19 uh, status in the province's reopening framework. Niagara Region continues to be in the red control zone. And uh, that has seen some slight modifications from red zones of past. And the actual details of uh, the red uh, category are sort of detailed in the report. So I won't waste anyone's time going through it. Um, the second element or focus of the report is the COVID-19 vaccination program. Uh, again, Niagara Region follow, is following the province's three-phase program, um, and we are currently just wrapping up phase one uh, of the program and transitioning into phase two. In doing so, uh, the region has uh, established vaccination centers in each of the area municipalities, uh, Wayne Fleet's first clinic is scheduled for uh, tomorrow, March 31st, and uh, the information we have is that that clinic is full to capacity at this time. Uh, there are apparently still a number of uh, vacancies or openings that are available uh, in St. Catharines uh, at Brock University, uh, but outside of that, uh, the, the, the Wayne Fleet clinic is currently full. Um, that said, on Monday, the, pro uh, the region announced that uh, the, the second uh, round, if you will, of uh, vaccination clinics, uh, are the announcements are starting to come out, and we have received the first two weeks or so of uh, the next round of clinics, um, and we anticipate hearing word about a, a further clinic in Waynefleet uh, probably uh, within the next uh, 7 to 14 days uh, that will advise us that uh, that clinic uh, will be operating later in the month of April. Um, they seem to be targeting a sort of monthly uh, turnaround time to come back to clinics uh, to, the, to the area municipalities. So that's what we're waiting for, and that is word on when Wayne Fleet's next clinic will be. Uh, the final, um, uh, I guess, element of the report that I want to touch on is the well water quality testing program that the township uh, sort of kick-started uh, earlier this month. Um, I want to emphasize that uh, Wayne Fleet is now a both a pickup uh, site for people to pick up water quality sample kits and a drop-off site to receive kits, kits once you have sampled water from your residence. Um, 
the uh, township is open uh, normal hours uh, for pickup and drop off of kits can be made Mondays through Thursdays during normal hours. That's 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And on Fridays prior to 9 a.m. Uh, if you're dropping off your kit on a Friday, it has to be in before 9 to make sure that the kit can be picked up by the courier that is taking the sampling kit to the, to the province's testing labs in Hamilton. So uh, once again, kits can be picked up, empty kits can be picked up during uh, regular business hours, 8.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday, holidays accepted. Um, and kits that have already been completed and are being returned can be returned Mondays through Thursdays from 8.30 to 4.30 and on Fridays prior to 9 a.m. Um, we've had a lot of good uh, take up on the program. We've had regular uh, pickups and drop offs. Um, so the program is working very well for Wayne Fleet at this time. Uh, that summarizes uh, the report. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer or get the information. But otherwise, uh, that's it for the month of March. Okay, we just have a motion that the Administrative Staff Report ASR 006-2021 respecting COVID-19 impact report be received as information. Mover seconder on that, please. Councillor Gilmore and Councillor McClellan. And now discussion. Councillor Cridland. Uh, thank you uh, to you, Mayor, to our CAO, first of all, thank you for uh, setting up that uh, service for the water service and I'm going to just uh, just going to clarify I'm sure it's the case but that has been set up during COVID or as a result of COVID but that's going to continue now uh, indefinitely so that is a new service that Wayne Fleet now provides its residents am I correct in that? Uh, that is correct Councillor we have been designated as the new pickup drop-off site for for the entire township yes. Thank you very much excellent. Okay, Councillor McClellan. Yeah, to you, Mr. Mayor. Before I left home, I was told to make sure I thanked whoever set this up. My wife is very happy about this, so thank you. Well, the staff did all the work on it. So, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, again, all the staff at the township played a role in getting it together from operations, making sure we had the right equipment, uh, from our deputy clerk for twisting the arms of people at both the region and the province. Um, and actually yourself, Mr. Mayor, who uh, approached the region on a number of occasions, and it certainly did help uh, sort of swing things our way. So, yes, a very much needed program. A good effort by everybody. Um, I have any further, Councilor McCollum? Okay, I have a, a question regarding to the uh, vaccination clinic. Um, I was in the hall when they did their dry run uh, last week. They were in and set everything up as a test run. I found it, I think, a little bit tight. And uh, I know at the time when the hall was chosen, I don't know if the arena was available or, or not. Now that the ice is out and there is potential for it to be used, if there are further clinics here, will we be looking at using the arena as a potential site, which would be probably better than the hall? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, and I know that we have the uh, CEMC, our fire chief, on the line as well. Um, we actually had those discussions uh, there are climate control issues associated with uh, utilizing the, uh, the arena facility um, that weren't quite uh, conducive to the type of work that was happening and the facility, the arena itself. And again, perhaps if, if Morgan is on, he can, uh, he can address that question to a greater, with greater detail. Okay, uh, look. Good Go ahead, Chief. Yeah, to, uh, to you, Mr. Mayor and all of Council, um, that, that has been discussed uh, with public health. Um, as previously said, you know, at the time the ice wasn't available. Um, certainly I will, I will make mention and we can do a second look as I see that uh, uh, looking at the schedule, we're not, uh, we don't have a second clinic book for quite some time. Uh, I will say though, um, it, it's more than just setting up some tables and chairs. There's uh, IT requirements. Um, sanitation requirements, ac uh, accessibility. Um, so those are all things that will have security, parking. Um, so I will certainly uh, mention it to them and we can review it. Uh, if they uh, say that uh, um, it's, it's an option, then uh, we'll certainly assist. Um, it will also mean a legal review of the agreement that was previously or just, just signed with the region for the use of our hall uh, till the end of September. So that'll all have to be uh, 
items that are, are discussed and, and considered before we uh, change the location. Okay, uh, just a number. Uh, some of the public asked me why aren't we doing it in the arena, which is really the reason I brought it up. I understood there were some logistics involved. And that's not to say that uh, after tomorrow they don't say it was a great facility and it worked perfectly, which means there's no reason to change anything. So uh, it's more for the, the public out there just to know that we did look at the arena and uh, it was the fire halls where we landed. So, okay, any other questions on this? Okay. Seeing none, the uh, motion is on the floor to receive the report. And uh, Councillor McClellan. In favour. Councillor Van Vliet. In favour. Councillor Cridland. In favour. Councillor Gilmore. In favour. And that is carried. Okay, we now move on to ASR 007-2021, the Municipal Act 2020 Remuneration Reporting. And I look to our Treasurer, Ms. Louie, to speak to that, please. Uh, thank you. So through the mayor to all of council, ASR 007 is a routine report prepared in accordance with section 284 of the Municipal Act. This report is prepared annually to report remuneration and expenses paid to council and local boards appointed by council with respect to his or her duties for the year of 2020. Uh, so I would be happy to answer any questions if there are any at this time. Okay, any questions, comments? Councillor Gilmore. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Through you to uh, Mallory. Can the column uh, one third tax free be removed? It's uh, been legislated out of existence. Yes, through Councillor Gilmore to all of Council, yes, we can certainly remove that from the template as that's no longer eligible. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none. Uh, the uh, motion being an administrative staff report respecting Municipal Act 2020 re remuneration reporting be received as information. Mover and a seconder for that, please. Councillor McClellan and Councillor Van Bleet. And any further discussion? Okay, seeing none. Councillor Gilmore, in favor or opposed? In favor. Councillor Cridland. In favor. Councillor Van Bleet. In favor. And Councillor McClellan. In favor. And that report is carried. Okay, we move on to our drainage staff report, uh, Memorandum Re Indian Creek Municipal Drain Court of Revision. And we'll look to our uh, drainage superintendent, Mr. Jemison, to give his report, please. Great, uh, thank you through you, Mr. Mayor, to all of council. So this memo is just summarizing the court of revision that was held on February 25th, 2021 for the Indian Creek Municipal Drain. Uh, at that court, uh, the court heard one appeal and upheld the engineer's report. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions? Okay, we have a motion to put it on the floor then. A uh, memorandum from the drainage superintendent respecting Indian Creek Municipal Drain Court of Revision be received for information. Mover, seconder, Councillor McClellan and Councillor Cridland. Yes, Cridland. Uh, any other discussion? Okay, seeing none, and the vote please. Councillor McClellan? In favour. Councillor Van Vliet? In favour. Councillor Cridland? In favour. Councillor Gilmore? In favour. And that is carried. Okay, so we move to the final reading of the Indian Creek Drain Report. Mr. Uh, Jemison, again please. Great, uh, thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to all council. So this staff report is recommending that bylaw 002-2021 be read a third and final time. Uh, the bylaws for the adoption of the Section 78 Engineer's Report update for the Indian Creek Municipal Drain. This project was undertaken in March of 2019 uh, following the procedures of the Drainage Act. This recommendation will allow for the tendering and construction of the project. Okay, thank you. So the motion being that Drainage Staff Report DSR 005-2021 respecting the final reading of the Indian Creek Drain Report be received and that bylaw 002-2021 be given a third and final reading and passed. A mover and a seconder for that, please. Councillor Van Vliet and Councillor McClellan. And is there any other discussion? Okay, seeing none, and we'll record the vote. Councillor McClellan. In favor. Councillor Van Vliet. In favor. Councillor Cridland. In favor. And Councillor Gilmore. In favor. And that is carried. 
Oh, and one more from our drainage superintendent, DSR 006-2021. A uh, brief overview of this report, please, uh, Mr. Jemison. Great. Uh, thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to all of Council. So this staff report is summarizing the drainage work that was completed in 2020 and what uh, we're planning for 2021. Uh, as with most uh, situations, COVID-19 slowed down some of our projects with the permitting, uh, things like that. But we were able to accomplish uh, a fair amount of drain maintenance, the reconstruction of the skeleton municipal drain, and some large culverts uh, on road crossings within the township. There's quite a few engineers reports that are currently being updated due to some of the limitations on public gatherings, those were delayed. Uh, but throughout the year, we were able to hold some meetings online and in person. And that's something that staff want to carry forward into the future when, when we're able to still have our public gatherings to offer that online component as well, because that was well received. Our 2021 maintenance program is quite full. Uh, all of the permits have been submitted and some have come back already. There's a few projects on that list that have been on the docket for a couple years that we will be able to get to this year. Um, and then finally, uh, as we just passed, uh, Council just passed the Indian Creek, received final reading, as well as the Bridgewater drain earlier this year. So those will be going out for tender and construction. Um, so if there's any questions about uh, the, the maintenance program or, or the drains, I'd be happy to, to receive them. Okay, thank you. So the motion being that drainage staff report DSR 006-2021 respecting the township's 2020-2021 drainage report update be received and that the 2021 municipal drain maintenance program be approved. A mover and a seconder to put that on Councillor McClellan and Councillor Gilmore. And is there any discussion? Councillor Gilmore. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Through you to Mark. Mark, uh, we've you and I have talked a bit about Big Forks before, but uh, just so that everybody's aware, the, the maintenance work um, that you're proposing is only limited by the uh, amount of time and availability of our own equipment uh, on the Big Forks. Is that correct? Uh, th that is correct. So there are quite a few environmental restrictions on that drain as well. Uh, so the maintenance that we have proposed um, fits within kind of the restrictions that have been placed on us from the Department of uh, Fisheries and Oceans and the Conservation Authority. Okay, that, that was my question. So as far as the, the permit that you have, it's only limited to, to that uh, 9,500 linear feet, which I would assume is probably no, you know, 10, maybe 20% of the length of that drain. I I'm assuming it's at least 80,000 feet. Um, that's that's correct uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So the, the, the maintenance that's proposed for Big Fork Strain is to do the partial cleanouts at uh, the junction points where all the other secondary drains outlet in, where there in theory could be the most sedimentation in those areas. Um, so this is kind of the first step in, in working with the permitting system that's in place to see what we can achieve with that. Okay, so in the long run, like that, that drain, um, you know, was, as you're probably well aware, was last cleaned in the very late 80s, maybe 88 or 9. And I've driven along it a little bit um, recently, and, I mean, the whole thing could benefit. We brushed, we brushed the leeward side when we, when we should have been allowed to brush the windward side, but I realized that, you know, you were limited again by other levels of bureaucracy that, maybe couldn't figure out that you should take the trees down on the side that they're going to blow into it, not away from it. However, is there going to be ever a time where we can actually do what should have been done and do the other side as well? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So um, potentially, I wouldn't be able to say yes or no definitively. Um, through the, the Drainage Act, we have the ability to maintain that drain. Um, one of the ways that we could achieve maintenance that we have previously done would be to go through an engineer's report updates um, on that drain. I believe the last time they were able to really do it, it was when that drain had been engineered and they were able to bring in a drag line. Um, with the excavator and things like that, the, the maintenance is limited as to what you're able to accomplish within the, the regulations that are placed on us now. Okay, well, like I, I still feel like we need to continue to push back a little bit um, because, like to me, it was total nonsense to 
to clear that the side that we cleared, although it it went along uh, not far from my house and it did make it look nicer, but it doesn't make it didn't make any sense. Um, and there's there's trees in that thing all the way along, so cleaning the junctions is is really is really a band-aid solution. So uh, I realize you can't do it all this year, but I I'd like to see that. Um, you know, move forward and we push back a little bit and try to get a little more maintenance ability to, to make it what it needs to be rather than, you know, continually be stonewalled by people that, uh, you know, probably haven't even looked at it. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Councillor McClellan. Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor. Mark, my following Councillor Gilmore's line of thought there, um, the last few winters haven't been that bad. I know there's a fish spawning season and there's a fish mating season and there's every other season under the world that the MNR in oceans and fisheries makes you get out of the water by. But in the wintertime, I mean, if we were having a mild winter, could we not go in there with a long-reach excavator and, and go at this? Yes, you may say, well, if it's snow and ice, it's, it's not good. But this year, I don't think we had ice. We could have worked all winter on that, and it's just you know maybe we got to rethink how we're going to do it if we're going to try and get that done in a reasonable amount of time. So uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, the the township excavator was utilized until almost the end of January this year on drains program. Um, so so when the weather does allow it, we we are able to use the excavator to do two projects through the winter. Councilor McCall? Yeah, so if I can, so if ours is busy, is there a reason why we can't, again, rent an excavator and, and get the work done? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, so uh, up until this time, it's just been completed in-house through our own drainage operator and our own machine. Um, that's something that perhaps we could explore. So I guess the question there is, are we keeping up with the needs and, you know, should we be renting a, another machine when possible, as I think where Councillor McClellan's going, when if we're not getting our drains done properly, and drainage in Wainfleet is an exceptionally important issue, and so I think that's where that is. Perhaps that's something we should look at exploring with uh, staff. Yes, and that during the winter months, most contractors' equipment isn't all that busy, so you might get a better price just to keep the thing moving and working, and it's worth a try. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, the motion is on the floor for voting. And uh, Councillor McClellan, in favor? In favor. Councillor Van Vliet? In favor. Councillor Gilmore? In favor. Councillor Cridland? In favor. And that report is received. Okay, move on to DSR 007-2021, the Casey Drain, Casey Drain North Extension. And again, Mr. Jemison, you're on again. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to all council. So this is the, the last one for this evening. Uh, drainage Staff Report 7 is summarizing some of the challenges associated with the Casey Drain system. So the Casey Drain is the only drain in the township that outlets to Lake Erie. I was most recently updated in 1949 when the lake levels were quite a bit lower than what we have been experiencing recently. The provisional data provided by the MPCA um, in that report shows um, the number of days per year that the lake levels have been higher than the Casey drain. So it's been, it's been, uh, it's been a challenge dealing with the lake levels. Um, so when the lake is higher like that, uh, often sand, debris, or even in the winter, ice will block the outlet of the drain, causing potential flooding upstream. The increasing storm events also cause storm surge to travel up the drain, causing potential flooding as well. Um, there's also been some land use changes and severances on the drain. So this drain receives the most inquiries out of any across the township. Uh, staff have met with landowners previously about the improvement process, but nothing formal has been submitted. So the recommendation um, is, is to, for staff to reach out to engineers to see what some of the protections and improvement projects might be available for this type of drain. Okay, thank you. And the motion being that this drainage staff report 007-2021 respecting the Casey Drain and Casey Drain North Extension be received. And that council directs staff to discuss improvement options for the Casey Drain and Casey Drain North with qualified drainage 
engineers. A mover and a seconder for that. Councillor McClellan and Councillor Van Vliet have moved it and discussion. Councillor Gilmore. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mark, if we go ahead and, uh, and get an engineer to start looking at it, um, are, is the township going to carry the cost of that until, until there's a petition? And if there's no petition, then we're going to get uh, some advice, uh, absorb that, and then decide what we're going to do? Or how exactly? I mean, you know, you've, you've met with people that, you know, I'm aware of that, but no one's ever requested a 78 because um, I think they're fearful of the cost of it, and rightfully so, I believe. I, I'm, all for, I'm all for getting some information. I just wonder, we'll get that, pay for it, and then, and then take another run at, uh, at all the affected landowners? Is that, is that how you see this going? Through you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, Councillor Gilmore. So um, the recommendation right now is just to reach out to engineers and see what some of the options are. So when we have had petitions submitted previously from landowners, uh, we've done the same same kind of thing, asking engineers to provide examples of reports that have been recently completed so that we can compare the costs of those types of projects and, and, and what's available. Because this is the first lakeside drain project that the township would be undertaking, uh, I would like to make sure that we have a better picture. So this is just to discuss the option with engineers and I would then bring back that type of discussion um, and, and what some of the options and costing had been could be. Um, that being said, I have met with city of Port Coburn and looked at a few of their drains as well as Haldeman County that outlet into the lake. Uh, and there's a variety of different things out there. So it's, it's mainly just getting the information back to council and then to be able to decide whether or not to pursue appointing an engineer where there would be costs. Right now, there is no cost involved. Okay, Councillor Gilmore, carry on. Okay, but there will be a, I assume there'll be, you know, some cost to talking to the engineer. And we're going to, through the drainage uh, budget, just absorb that and then go from there. I guess that's, that's what I'm kind of asking. Or you, or you think they're going to talk to you for free? Uh, three, Mr. Mayor, my experience in the past has been that they would provide um, kind of their uh, resume on these types of projects for free and examples. Um, and, and that is just a, a phone conversation and a follow-up email that they provide. Um, and then it would be just like if an appointment took place, the costs would be carried by the township and then assessed out to the landowners. Okay, Councillor McClellan. Yes, to you, Mr. Mayor. And Mark, I, you've probably looked at this six ways from Sunday, but I'm just wondering, is there, um, seeing as this is the only one that drains to the lake, if you had a topo map and had some elevations, there's a way to reroute this to maybe it ties into the Eagle Marsh drain and gets out that way? Or is there, has that been looked at? I'm, I'm guessing it has, but it might, for the cost of what it's going to take from what I'm thinking is going to go at the beach side, it may be easier to dig a bigger ditch. Uh, three, Mr. Mayor. Um, so the last time the, the main Casey drain was updated in 1949, uh, I, I'm not sure if that was evaluated. In the 80s, they added the Casey drain north, which is the Osteron Corners kind of area. Um, since that time, there have been some improvements on other drains in the area. So an improvement project could identify ways to move that out, but currently it has not been evaluated. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I guess I have a question in regards to, uh, so we approve this tonight and staff uh, goes out and, and uh, gets some opinion uh, information from uh, engineers, etc. cetera. Uh, we're no further ahead, really, because we know what may need to be done, but if the public has not petitioned and is, is not going to petition, uh, our, I know we can do it, but there's going to be a lot of pushback from the residents because they've had the opportunity to request it uh, be a 78 and redone, correct? So I, I'm just not sure where we're going on this because if we've been talking to the residents and nobody's in, interested in doing anything about it, you know, we're no further ahead in one sense. Although we know what needs to be done, but they're, not, they're still going to sit and look at us and go, go ahead and do it and we don't want to pay for it. So I'm just 
you know, it's an interesting dilemma that we're in in that sense. So, but I, I think we should do the work on it for sure, the, the research and, and that, but I don't know if it's going to move it ahead at all. And uh, if they're fearful of uh, the bills that they're going to receive, uh, we don't want to be the ones pushing that down on them if they're content with living with it the way it is now. So just my thoughts on that. Anything, any comments there, uh, Mr. Jamison? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, no, there have been um, several sit-down meetings and phone conversations with landowners about that petition process, but nothing has come through yet. And how many years, over what time span? Uh, in my time with, through you, Mr. Mayor, in my time with the township since 2018, I believe, I believe it's four uh, sit-down formal meetings about the improvement process. Okay. One thing that we'll get by doing this is perhaps we'll get a, a, a bit of a ballpark figure in regards to dollars and then we could sit down with landowners again and maybe it's a little bit more palatable at that time. So uh, it's an interesting uh, situation for sure. Councillor McClellan, you had another question? Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. I'm thinking in my experience, you don't get a lot of information for free. They're not they're going to give you their qualifications and maybe some jobs, but they're not going to give you budget numbers. They're not going to give you a uh, detail to look at, like I said, if you could reroute it and get it to drain the other way. That way you don't have a drain going out in the lake so water level doesn't affect it. This be now becomes the head of it instead of the, mm -hmm. the outlet. There would be the inlet. So, um, you know, I say <laughs> there's no harm in asking, but I don't, see us getting a whole pile of information on this. Okay. And any other discussion or questions on this? Okay. The motion is on the floor, uh, two parts, receipt to receive the report, and secondly, to uh, direct staff to begin discussions with an engineer and just see, start looking at potential fixes for it. Okay. That's the two parts to the uh, motion. And so we we'll vote on that now. So, Councillor McClellan. In favor. Councillor Van Vliet. In favor. Councillor Cridland. In favor. And Councillor Gilmore. In favor. Okay, and that is carried, and we'll look forward to that report coming back to us uh, with as much information as we can get. So, okay, we move on to our fire staff report. Uh, we look uh, to Chief Alcock. If you'd give a brief overview of your memo, please. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of Council. Uh, the purpose of this memo is uh, to provide Council some information regarding a grant opportunity that has been provided to us uh, through the Office of the Fire Marshal and Emergency Management. Um, the province on March 11th indicated that, uh, made, made an announcement that there was $5 million that was going to be distributed through uh, the approximately 440 fire departments in the province. Uh, every fire department was eligible for about $4,500 as a base rate. And then moving from there, based on a, uh, a, a per capita, uh, was a, a top up beyond that. So uh, we we received notice that our uh, our allotment of that funding was sixty one hundred dollars, uh, and that we had to submit an application by March nineteenth. Uh, on March fifteenth, I submitted an application for um, training materials, uh, in station computers and screens, webcams and such. Uh, so we can continue to conduct our virtual training and provide the necessary technology for our firefighters to protect themselves while continuing uh, training. Um, I have since been made aware that we were successful, and uh, but part of that is we need to have council's resolution supporting the grant application and the uh, transfer payment made to the township. Um, I will also have to have the money spent by August 1st and a report go back to the province by September 1st uh, confirming that the funds were in fact spent as uh, as applied for. Uh, so the attachments is the grant announcement and the application that was submitted. Okay, thank you. So that motion is dictated by the uh, Fire Marshal's Office. Whereas the province of Ontario has announced a one-time grant to municipal fire services to assist in challenges associated with training and virtual inspections due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and whereas the township has identified a need to provide for improved virtual training infrastructure within each fire station for the benefit of its volunteer firefighters, now therefore be it resolved that the Council of the Township of Waynefleet does support and endorse an application to the Office of the Fire Marshal under 
the 2020-2021 Fire Safety Grant Application Program for computer software and software to facilitate virtual training in each of the township's fire stations. <coughs> I have a mover and a seconder for that, please. Councillor Gilmore and Councillor McClellan. And discussion. I guess I, I have one question, seeing none from anyone else. Uh, in so often in our grant process, when we receive a grant, there's also a, a component that the township has to uh, provide as well, maybe 10 or 20%. Is that the case here, or is it just straight uh, dollars by the, uh, by the uh, fire marshal's office? Uh, in this case, there is no municipal component. Um, I will add that this project was uh, previously discussed during the capital budget deliberations for equipment. Uh, if you'll recall, during that, uh, during that um, piece of the presentation, uh, I had included station computers in the capital for this year. Um, so this will help offset those costs. Um, but there is no municipal component with this grant. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, uh, in regards to the motion I just read, in favor or opposed, Councillor McClellan? In favor. Councillor Van Vliet? In favor. Councillor Cridland? In favor. Councillor Gilmore? In favor. And I'm in favor, and that is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. I just had one question for the fire chief, if oh. possible. Are you still there, uh, Chief Alcott? One question, yes, late, a late question came in. Yeah, no, well, it wasn't about this, so I was holding off. What, just a quick update on where we stand with the fire hall plans, drawings. Just on where we are on the uh, drawings for the fire station, how far along are we? Yeah, um, certainly. So we meet every two weeks with the architect and the design team. Um, we were delayed about a month um, reviewing the agreement with the architect. Um, our solicitor and, and their legal team was under review. Uh, we've since finalized that agreement um, and they have begun the, uh, the schematic and the, and the site design work. Uh, and I have requested that they have a, uh, a report and a, a preliminary plan available to us by the May meeting. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, moving on to our planning staff reports. PSR 006-2021, removal of holding H symbol, file number Z05202021 w vacant lot Lambert Road. And we look to our planner, Ms. Ivins, to speak to that, please. Thank you through you, Mr. Mayor, to all of council. Uh, so the township received an application from Peter Rich and Sarah Ness uh, to remove the holding symbol for their property located on the south side of Lambert Road, approximately 275 meters west of Green Road South. Uh, the applicants intend on constructing a single detached dwelling on the subject property. Um, the property is zoned rural A4 with a holding symbol. And that holding symbol means that development of the property cannot occur until a noise study is completed to the satisfaction of the township. Uh, and this requirement is due to the property's proximity to the rail yard uh, and rail line located on the north side of Lambert Road. So the applicants uh, provided a rail noise and vibration feasibility study prepared by HGC Engineering. Um, and uh, that has been reviewed and circulated to all commenting agencies. The study evaluated potential noise and vibration impacts on the proposed dwelling in accordance with the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Park Noise Guidelines as well as CP rail uh, requirements. So the study concluded that indoor and outdoor sound levels for the future dwelling are predicted to comply with the ministry's NPC uh, 300 guidelines, uh, provided a number of mit mitigation measures are implemented. Uh, these mitigation measures include uh, that the dwelling be designed with a provision for the installation of central air conditioning um, at the occupant's discretion. Uh, brick masonry uh, exterior wall construction for the living spaces on the east facades of the proposed dwelling and noise warning clauses um, to be included in all future offers of purchase and sale and tenancy agreements to inform future residents um, of the pre presence of the rail line in the CP Welland Yard and that ground borne rail vibration may occasionally be perceptible. Um, so I've reviewed the noise feasibility study and accept the findings and recommendations. Uh, the application was also circulated to external agencies and townships departments for review and comment. 
the region of Niagara noted no objection, uh, provided that the owner enter into a development agreement with the township to implement those, um, the recommendations of the noise study. Uh, the MPCA noted no objection, provided that vegetation removal be minimized along the regulated water course and that appropriate erosion and sediment controls be implemented during the construction activities. Uh, and the Township Drainage Department noted that the property is assessed to the Lambert Road Municipal Drain, uh, but had no concerns given the nature of the application. So the Region and Conservation Authority requirements have been included in the development agreement attached as Appendix C to the report. Um, and so the recommendation this evening is that bylaw 10 2021 be enacted by council to remove the holding provision for the subject property and that council authorize the execution of the development agreement. Uh, approval of the bylaw and execution of the development agreement will allow the applicants to submit their building permit application and begin constructing the home. Okay, thank you. So the motion being that planning staff report PSR 006-2021 respecting removal of the holding symbol, uh, file number Z05-2021-W, vacant lot, Lambert Road, be received, and that council enact an amending bylaw to remove the holding symbol for the development of lands described as concession five, part lot six RP 59R515 part three in the Township of Waynefleet, attached as Appendix B, and that Council authorize the Mayor and Clerk to execute the development agreement attached as Appendix C. I have a mover and a seconder for that, Councillor Gilmore and Councillor McClellan, and discussion. Okay, um, I have a comment on this. Um, it seems like a, a complicated process when the lot, it, they can stand at the lot, they can see the trains, they can hear the trains. Um, it just seems like a lot of, of time and bureaucracy involved here to, to, to get this um, to the permit stage. Um, I think it was a year ago they were trying to do this and uh, it's been a, quite a challenge to get this done. So um, it's been lots of, lots of people have had to put their signature to it. So it, it just seemed like a lot of work for in my mind, but oh, Councillor Gilmore as well. Thanks, Mary. Well, I was going to bring that up, and since you did, I want to add to that. Sarah, is um, any lot that gets created along that stretch of road, every individual person will have to repeat the identical same study with the identical same uh, results? Is that right? Uh, that's correct. So anyone who's looking to um, sever uh, for a building lot, or if it's currently a vacant lot, it probably already has the holding um, provision applied to the property. So they're required to um, have an engineering firm complete the study and review uh, on the specifics of the lot. So the location of the proposed dwelling in relation to the rail yard and the rail line. Um, and that's a requirement that stems from the provincial policy statement about um, sensitive land uses next to major facilities such as railways. Um, and then that's trickled down into the township's own official plan policies about um, impacts and assessing noise and vibration impacts when sensitive land uses such as residential are proposed next to these facilities. It's a protection for not only the future residential, but also for the railway company. Um, you know, some of these warning clauses that need to be inserted into um, offers for purchase and sale or leases and tenancy agreements um, is kind of a legal coverage for anyone who's looking to buy or lease um, property in this vicinity that there may be occasional impacts to the enjoyment of their property associated with these facilities. Okay, thanks. So it, it's a provincial policy statement and so it's law. It's just the part that bothers me is that it dictates, in fact, that you have to put an air conditioning system in your home. Most people do anyways, but I mean, it just seems to be a little too much uh, oversight by the government here in this situation and and uh, I'm just a little uncomfortable with it. But anyway, so the motion has been read and... Uh, oh, sorry, Councillor McClellan. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so... Um, Sarah, this, I take it when this lot was created, there was no noise study done, or is it 
even when you sell the lot, the new owner has to do, like, there's only one new noise study required ever on a piece of property. Is that correct, or does it go every time it changes hands? No. Um, so uh, because this, vacant, this lot is vacant, there's no dwelling there. Um, the zoning put that hold. So when we did our zoning bylaw to bring it into conformity with our new official plan, we had a look at all of the vacant lots, existing lots within the township um, around this uh, rail yard and railway line and put in the, the holding provision on those vacant lots so that they couldn't be developed until those noise studies are completed. But once the noise study is completed, um, then it, you know the, the lot is cleared for development. So any existing developed lots, um, if they wanted to do an addition to the home or put up a detached structure wouldn't be subject to the same study requirements. But if you're looking to sever or you have a vacant lot, then that's when these um, studies are required. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I think we've all voiced our concern there. To me, it just seems like way too much overreach. But anyway, so the motion is there, and I look for the vote on receiving that and uh, agreeing to execute the development. Councillor McClellan. In favor. Councillor Van Vliet. In favor. Councillor Cridland. In favor. Councillor Gilmore. In favor. Thank you, that is carried. Uh, we move on to Public Works Staff Report, PWSR 003-2021, regarding the award of tender for loader backhoe, and we look to Mr. Nan to speak to that, please. Good evening, Your Worship, Members of Council. Uh, this uh, report that's in front of you uh, is a result of a uh, replacement of a uh, existing 2007 case backhoe, um, during the budget deliberations, council approved the replacement costing uh, and staff prepared a tender package uh, with the specifications to be submitted. Uh, and we received three bids as a result of the tender closing. Uh, and the results of the tender closing are forthwith, as well as the recommendations from staff. Okay, thank you. Um... So the motion being that the Public Works Staff Report PWSR 003-2021 respecting award of tender for loader backhoe be received and that council authorize the manager of operations to purchase a 2021-580-SN case loader backhoe from Strongco Corporation being the lowest bid submitted. And can I have a mover seconder on that please? Councillor Van Vliet and Councillor McClellan. And is there any discussion on that? Okay, seeing none, we do the recorded vote. Councillor McClellan. In favor. Councillor Van Vliet. In favor. Councillor Cridland. In favor. Councillor Gilmore. In favor. And that is carried. Moving on to PWSR 004-2021 regarding the award of tender for a pickup truck. And Mr. Nan, again, would you give your report on that? Thank you, Your Worship, uh, to you and, and members of council. Uh, again, this was a, um, uh, a purchase that was approved in the 2021 budget deliberations process. Staff prepared a tender with uh, specifications based on our current fleet uh, and was submitted uh, uh, and available to the public. Uh, as a result of that, we received four bidders back. Um, just to note, we did actually contact approximately 15 various uh, dealers in the area uh, and only uh, five picked up from there but uh, we only received four bids. Uh, as noted in the report uh, some of the basic qualifications that we did outline in the report or in the tender package uh, and we uh, did noted uh, a few uh, uh, differences as in the uh, various tenders that were submitted to us uh, and from the bidders um, we reviewed the different specifications uh, and we've recommended based on some of the uh, basics, which is uh, the existing uh, um, filters and oil that we currently have based on our current fleet. Uh, we had some concerns regarding the box structure itself on uh, being aluminum as compared to a steel box, uh, as well as staff uh, had some 
uh, reservations on um, some of the specifications because some were actually very small engines compared to others uh, with blower or with uh, turbos, uh, which isn't what we expect or called for, uh, as well as we considered the delivery availability and the recommendations were based on those uh, and uh, for council's consideration. Okay, thank you. So the motion being that public work staff report respecting PWSR 004-2021 respecting the award of a tender for a pickup truck be received and that council authorize the manager of operations to award the tender for the purchase of one 2021 GMC Sierra regular cab two-door two-wheel drive full-size pickup truck to Niagara Motors in the amount of 32,500 plus HST. Mover seconder for that please. Councillor Van Vliet and Councillor McClellan and is there any discussion? Councillor Gilmore. <clears throat> Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Richard, just a question. Are, are you having all the equipment uh, oiled annually? Uh, through your worship and members of council, yes. Uh, the reason why some of our fleet is lasting as long as it is now, uh, I'm not sure what was done previous to me starting in 2015, uh, but all our, uh, all our vehicles, pickup trucks, dump trucks, uh, service vehicles, as well as the fire fleet. Uh, Morgan has jumped on board with fire fleet as well, uh, and we are getting them done annually. Okay, any other questions? Okay, seeing none, recorded vote. Councillor Gilmore? Favor. Councillor Cridland? In favor. Councillor Van Vliet? In favor. Councillor McClellan? In favor. And I'm in favor, and that is carried. We now remove, move on to review of correspondence and uh, we look at C091-2021, Invitation to Participate in World Autism Awareness Day by Raising an Autism Awareness Flag on April 6, 2021. Uh, we have done this previously. It's one of the ones we do. Is there any discussion on this correspondence? Okay, seeing none, can we have a, a motion to... Anybody? Councillor Van Vliet, you're making a motion that we accept this and yep. raise the flag on that date. Yep. Thank you. A seconder on that. Councillor McClellan, any discussion? Okay, seeing none, in favor or opposed? Councillor McClellan, in favor. Councillor Van Vliet? In favor. I was Councillor waiting. Cridland? In favor. And Councillor Gilmore? In favor. And that is carried April 6th. Is there any other correspondence item that council would like to uh, pull for discussion? Okay, seeing none, we move on to our bylaws. Uh, that the following bylaws be read and passed this 30th day of March 2021. Bylaw number 002 2021 being a bylaw to provide for drainage works in the township of Waynefleet in the region of Niagara for Indian Creek drain. And bylaw number 010-2021 being a bylaw to amend the Corporation of the Township of Waynefleet Zoning Bylaw 034-2014 pursuant to Section 36 of the Planning Act RSO 1990. Can we move her in a second there for those two bylaws, please? Councillor Cridlin, what, did your hand go up there? I think it did. Yes, it did. Councillor Cridlin and Councillor McClellan, any discussion on those bylaws? Okay, seeing none, recorded vote. Councillor McClellan? In favor. Councillor Van Vliet? In favor. Councillor Cridland? In favor. Councillor Gilmore? In favor. And those are uh, carried and adopted. Notices of motion. I think Councillor Van Vliet had a notice of motion. I refer to yourself. Sure. Um, do you just want me to read the motion and then we'll talk about it, right? Right. Yes. That the um, where am I? That the township established no parking zones on both sides of Tunnelcliffe Road north from Regional Road 27 to a point just south of the first driveway south of Regional Road 27. Okay, can I have a seconder for that motion? Councillor McClellan. Okay, and discussion on it, please. Councillor McClellan. Oh, okay. McClellan will go first. So my question would be is, um, are these going to be a seasonal thing or is this uh, year round? And will they carry the same no parking fines that we have along the beach? I'll look to Councillor CAO for that, please. Uh, three, Mr. Mayor, to Council. Uh, 
In respect to the first question, uh, unless council directs otherwise in, in the motion, uh, it will be year round. Um, if you'd like to uh, limit it to specific months or time frames, we can certainly do that, but now is the time to sort of make that proposal. Uh, otherwise, it will be year round. Uh, as to the fines, it is the same fine structure for all no parking zones in the township. Um, so yes, it would be the same whether it's at the beach or whether it's on Tuna Cliff. Okay, so if I can, I just have one, one more question. question. Yeah. Yes. So then I think the problem arises in the fall and in the spring before the golf course is open. So you know, maybe I just don't want to have the people that live on that street not be able to have somebody park there that comes to visit them and get a ticket when in the summertime if they were to have a birthday party and there was more than what they had in their driveways. So they parked on the side of the road. It, the problem, my understanding is, is when the golf course is closed and people can't golf and want to go out and practice. So, you know, if it was from Labor Day or October, Thanksgiving oh. to May 2-4, then that it might solve the problem and our neighbors still get to use the road parking. Okay. I, first of all, um, Councillor Van Vliet, I want to apologize to you. That was your motion. I should have allowed you to speak first. No worries. I know it's, it's pro improper what uh, I saw John's hand go up first, so my apologies to you. So would you like okay. to speak to it now, please? Yeah, the reason why I brought this is because I've had the same complaint for a couple of years now that people are parking and crossing the road to use the golf course all year round, not just in the spring and in the fall. Um, there's no problem with having um, company or guests or whatever because there's no, there's nobody there. There's only one driveway. That's where I want to stop the signs at. So they're stop, they're, and they're, they're now getting confrontational with residents. Okay, and again, sorry, uh, that was improper protocol on my part. Is there any other questions or discussions on this before we vote on the motion? Uh, Councillor Quidlin, thank you. Uh, no, thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, again, when we try to solve these um, parking issues, sometimes we don't quite land where we want to the first, uh, first time. So um, the, the amount of no parking zone then isn't the whole road. It's just a portion that seems to be the problem which is what we've done in some other areas. Um, what, are the, what is the cost of, like, how many signs are we talking? How many locates? Do we have a sense of how many is involved uh, uh, for this? Maybe perhaps Richard can comment on that. Yeah, we look to our uh, Mr. Nan to speak to that, please. Uh, yes, Your Worship, through you to uh, Councilor Credlin and all of Council. Um, yeah, we are anticipating, it is a dead end road off of the, uh, of the regional road. Um, the biggest complaints, obviously, people aren't going to drive or walk very far when they're going to go golfing uh, for that distance. We wanted to make sure we encompass the driveway for the property itself uh, to make sure they had no visibility issues uh, entering or exiting their driveway as well. So we included a section beyond the driveway. Uh, we're probably looking at three, uh, three signs on each side. Uh, we will have to get locates for the, uh, the one side. Uh, there are hydro poles on one side, but we will have to get locates and posts on the other. Uh, we're looking at approximately six signs uh, and three posts. Uh, and if we can utilize the hydro poles, uh, it shouldn't be that difficult. But, uh, I mean, we, we put an average price of 150 per sign, but that usually includes posts and labor and installation. Uh, we will save some in this case. Uh, because we should be able to utilize the hydro poles. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, anything further, Councillor Cridlin? Uh, no, I'm again. I'm just thinking about. Uh, I think we did uh, Woodlawn and Maplewood, and uh, you know, the, it's very different one end of the road versus the other end of the road, and what happened. Uh, so we ended up putting no parking sides, you know, th throughout the whole road, and that was maybe more than we actually needed, but. Um, uh, you know, again, the, the complaints have come in live to the councillors, so uh, hopefully we're going to land on the right amount. Okay, thank you. So any further comments? Oh, Councillor Gilmore. Thank you, Mayor. So I, I assume we're just going to refer this to staff for uh, a report for the next meeting with the appropriate bylaw. Is that 
Well, it's a notice of motion, so uh, Will? Uh, three, Mr. Mayor. If this motion is supported this evening, uh, that is direction to staff to proceed with the necessarily bylaw amendments, which will come forward at the next meeting. It won't necessarily be a report. But I can also advise that staff have been working uh, over the last several months now on a uh, revised uh, parking bylaw for this coming summer uh, to address some of the beach issues and, and other matters. Uh, so we'll very likely include uh, this, uh, this revision as part of the overall bylaw update, which we're uh, working very hard on bringing to you, uh, hopefully in April, um, but certainly before May 2-4. Okay, so yes, this is direct uh, um, instructions to council to establish the signs and put them up. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none. Oh, Councillor Van Vliet. Just one quick question through you, Mr. Mayor. Well, then we wouldn't be putting the signs up until after it comes back as a report? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we couldn't put the signs up until a bylaw is passed. Uh, and the bylaw can potentially be passed at the next meeting if we're able to get everything together. If not, uh, the, the meeting after that. But we will try very hard to do it uh, for the next meeting. Okay, because we've already had situations this season. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, so in favor or opposed to this motion? Councillor McClellan. In favor. Councillor Van Vliet. In favor. Councillor Cridland. In favor. Councillor Gilmore. Favor. And I'm in favor, and that is carried. Are there any other notices of motion this evening? Councillor Gilmore. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I have uh, three things. First of all, um, at the next meeting, I hope to bring a motion for consideration of council uh, regarding a municipal governance issue. Uh, I've been speaking with the staff regarding um, the topic, and it. And they've sort of advised me that it may require the opinion of the solicitor regarding the subject. So we may need to consider that in closed session um, at the next meeting in April. Um, secondly, I'd like, to, I'd like to have another look at the uh, clean yards bylaw at the next meeting uh, and the noise bylaw at the next meeting. I don't, I don't think I need to make a, any motion to do that. It's just a request. We can... We can look at uh, bylaws at our, uh, you know, at our wish. Is that correct, Madam Clerk? Three, Mr. Mayor, to uh, Councillor Gilmore. So a notice of motion would need to be provided um, at the next meeting for that direction to happen. If uh, you're looking to have that brought back at the next meeting, the procedure bylaw would have to be waived for the requirements of the notice of motion to be uh, passed this evening. All right, well... Uh, yeah, <clears throat> my understanding is that I always thought we could just request uh, to have a look at bylaws at any time. However, I'm uh, open to whatever. I just I don't want to kick this can too far down the road uh, without having another look at it. So <clears throat> I'll, I'll uh, take your direction on how to get it to the point where we can talk about those two things at the next meeting. So again, three, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Gilmore. So if you're looking to make the motion tonight, again, we'll have to waive the procedure bylaw. Uh, however, if you want to just provide notice tonight uh, that you're bringing a motion forward at the next meeting, then it will just be delayed one meeting. So next meeting, you would make that motion, and then the following meeting, um, the reports would be brought back. Their bylaws would be, would be brought back. All right, well, that's going to put it into May. I, I, I think it's... Uh procedurally uh, cumbersome. So you want me to make a motion to waive the by, uh, procedural bylaw at this point to bring back those two bylaws at the next meeting? So move. Okay, can I have a seconder for that? Councillor McClellan. Is there any discussion? Okay, to waive the, uh, we're waiving the bylaw that allows us to deal with this uh, tonight to have it at the next meeting. So, uh, no other questions? Oh, in favor or opposed? Councillor McClellan. In favor. Councillor Van Vliet. In favor. Councillor Cridland. In favor. And Councillor Gilmore. In favor. And I am in favor. So we'll be able to deal with those issues next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so uh, now I have to make a motion 
to bring back the Clean Yards Bylaw for review uh, and the Noise Bylaw for review at the uh, April 20, is it? 20th meeting, the next meeting. I believe it's the 20th. Any, do, you, do we need any further no, that, information? The governance uh, issue. That, that we can't. We can't talk the about government. that uh, until if we have to talk to the solicitor. Right. So I just want to. I just want to. Basically, I just want to review the clean yards bylaw again, and uh, in conjunction with that, the noise bylaw at the next meeting. Okay. So we have set aside the procedural bylaw. We voted on that. So now we're going to vote on these two right. uh, aspects. So any further discussion? Seconder for that. First seconder. of all. Okay. Council McClellan will second it. Is there any discussion on this? Okay, seeing none, so in favor or opposed? Councillor McClone? In favor. Councillor Van Vliet? In favor. Councillor Cridland? In favor. Councillor Gilmore? In favor. And I am in favor. So we'll, those are passed. We'll be able to deal with those at the next meeting. Okay, we move on to our bylaw to confirm the proceedings of our meeting this evening. That bylaw 11 2021 being the bylaw to adopt, ratify, and confirm the actions of the council at its meeting held on the 30th day of March, 2021, be read and passed this 30th day of March, 2021. A mover and a seconder for that, please. Councillor Van Vliet and Councillor McClellan, any discussion? Okay, seeing none. Councillor Cridlin, in favor or opposed? In favor. Councillor Gilmore? Councillor Van Vliet? In favor. And Councillor McClellan? In favor. And I'm in favor. So if there's no other business uh, this evening, this uh, meeting is now adjourned. Thank you very much. Good night, Donna. Good night, Donna. Good night.